All right, we are recording. Welcome to the first Feral Polymaths podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Gail Cow and uh, Mary Leah Quintana. Yay! Your friend. I know you. Friend of um, Gail. So this is our obviously our first episode, and we expect it to be very shitty and terrible in quality and content, but things will improve from here. Well, and um, you can about it every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is just our first episode. We're just introducing who we are uh, and what feral polymaths are or is, and um, and will yeah, be. and will be. <laughs> yeah, and you may hear my dog in the background because my puppy is very concerned. The other dog also has something to chew on. Even though she has there, eat that. Okay. Good dog. There you go. It has to like bark in people's faces or the other dog's face. Pardon me a moment. <laughs> you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna leave my office and you're gonna go out here. Look. Fetch. Good. Okay. And then I close the door. <laughs> Goodbye, yeah. dog. Goodbye, Goodbye, children. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, children. Goodbye. Yes. <laughs> So, okay, so just a brief summary. Mary Lee and I have been friends since our undergraduate days when we met at Smith College. We had the best ideas and conversations all the time, Obviously. all sorts of little dork projects we would get involved in. And uh, now we're old. We still get a math conference together as undergraduate. We, we've we've <laughs> done that a few times, I think. Yeah, you know, we were, we were, we're just, you know, Dorking it up all over campus. And uh, yeah, now we're old. Uh, we're the terrible class of human known as the middle aged mom. Oh, God. They're boring and uninteresting, and they only talk about poopy diapers, except now our kids are older. It's more about puberty, puberty, puberty. a lot of puberty. Um, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know there was one until I read our summary. <laughs> like, oh, wait, I'm. Uh, who am I? I'm a middle-aged mom. Yeah, like, isn't that yeah. awful? Nobody likes us. Like <laughs> because we're we're considered I don't know. But I don't just mom all day. I mean, I have a job and thoughts and um weird well, interests in physics and science and psychology and artificial intelligence and creativity and writing and art and I do lots of things related to those which is and Mary Leah as well, right? That's Tell right. us about all of your dorky interests, Mary oh, Leah. God. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is the, the, I think this is part of the point or the, this idea of uh, feral polymass that you've brought to me is so exciting precisely because it takes us out of this horrifying mom shell that is what we walk around with and what people assume from us and what people expect from us. And it's not at all what goes through our heads, even while we're like washing the dishes and cleaning up dog poop or cat poop or, oh God, who knows what else we'll find in the house. Yeah. And, yeah. So that's what's so exciting is like, I we might actually get to talk about things like, like art and, um, you know the details of drawing i'm very interested in um the biology of human behavior i'm super interested in uh oh i lost you you froze uh oh well maybe mary leah's will unfreeze and come back to us momentarily uh until then i will riff on something what am i talking about oh yeah so like we feel all isolated from the intellectual world due to our old momness. And um, so we're doing this podcast. There will also be a website and other probably social media stuff related to this very soon. So we can sort of pour our brain vomit out into the world and share our thoughts with anyone who might care. Um, uh, yeah. So. I think today what makes the most sense is maybe we should start by describing who we are in a little more detail. So while I'm waiting for Mary Leah to return due to her technical difficulties, 
Um, I'm so sorry, I disappeared. Oh, oh no worries. I, I, I kept going. I'm about to discuss a little bit about who I am, and then you okay, can talk okay. about who you are so people know what we are. we are and why we're here. Um, who am I? I am, well, I, I wrote it down somewhere. Da, 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 da. Oh, so <laughs> I'm a human female in her 40s mm -hmm. with, I'm married. I have three children. They are 19, 16, and 12. Uh, mm -hmm. Two dogs, two cats, a lizard. You know, you got to have the circus going on at home. Uh, career wise, I, well, so uh, at Smith College, I got a double majored math and physics. I went on to grad school, got master's degrees in math and physics. And one day I'll tell the story of why I didn't get a PhD. It has to do with a first husband oh. leaving. So there's a whole situation we, there. We but why we didn't get PhD stories. <laughs> yes. It has nothing to do with our lack of brilliance, you know. Well, also, but, uh, I I think if oh, somebody ahead. had like surveyed our class of like who's most likely to get a PhD, it would have been like those two. And we like, it didn't no, happen. No, <laughs> we like to have life disasters instead. That's but, not... you know, I got two master's degrees, math and physics. And for a while, I taught at community college, um, taught physics and astronomy and some math for well over a decade. There's a whole story there, too. I'm working on a book about problems in higher education. <laughs> um, I, during that time, I also, uh, I'd always loved writing, creative writing, and um, started pursuing it like crazy. Like, when I take on a new interest, I don't just like casually dip my toe in. I'm like, let's become an expert and obsess about this for every waking hour of every day. And so I got very, very good at fiction writing, creative writing, participated in workshops, won awards, I've done microfiction, short stories, novels, scripts for both uh, videos and uh, plays and, and all sorts of things like that. I'm uh, the founding editor of Microfiction Monday magazine, which is still going strong. We publish microfiction every Monday, played the drums in a Portland band for a while, briefly ran a micro press. We'll probably do that again. Um, and right now, so I left teaching around the time the pandemic was starting. And I work in sort of the content world. So I do a lot of blog writing, article writing, white papers, ad copy, slide decks, curriculum writing, video scripts, like all the types of writing um, that exist. Well, and you, you, what was you that? get to be instant expert in any subject somebody asks you yes. to oh my gosh that's what's so fun about freelance writing especially if you're a nerd who can handle like <laughs> science and complex things they will always give those to you they're like no one else wants to write about cybersecurity. i'm like oh i will <laughs> or like we have to write about these weird things they do in the like business world that they call these weird names i'm like okay we'll do that we'll figure that out um, so, so that's kind of been fun. I've learned, got to learn all sorts of weird things that, you know, most people would find terribly boring. Uh, so that's what I do. Um, now Mary Leah has to tell us what she does. Well, I think what's great about our doing a podcast together is that we, as friends, and, and we've been friends for a long time, have lived these bizarrely parallel lives going from super nerdlets in college, I also um, was in the sciences and that I was um, in self-designed in cognitive science, was supported by computer science and psychology. So we can bring those things to the table. And I was also a, a math major. And after college, I went on to Brown University uh, for applied mathematics. Um, but, you know, because of personal things, both during college and after, you know, really crashed and burned pretty hard on, on all fronts. Um, and, and also, you know, completely sub sublimated my life into getting married and running away from my problems pretty deeply. So uh, during that time, I, I had an ex-husband who continued his trajectory in math while I was support staff. And I mean, I got to do some very cool things. So I got to live in India and travel around the world, um, had two babies, 
took them in tow all over the place. Um, but really, and I also um, got an MFA uh, because after my great personal disasters, the one thing that kind of dug me out of the deep dark pit was drawing because it absorbed all of my attention. And I think probably like writing for you, it just, it allowed you to have the headspace to feel things that you couldn't feel in your everyday life or you just didn't have the tools for. Science definitely did not prepare me for like having any kind of emotional interaction with other people. Um, yeah, we were not equipped for that, but, but at least the actual art of drawing did that. Of course, like then the social aspect of work, like dealing with other artists is daunting and, and soul crushing in other ways. It's both exciting and like super charged and amazing and like deeply awkward and horrifying at the same time because you're constantly being judged. So that was an exciting experience uh, in the wonderful MFA program at Bard College. Um, and from there, uh, what's interesting is like both of us went into the, like the long dark night of, of baby care. <laughs> so we cared for children for a long time. And, um, my, my, uh, I, I've been currently going through a divorce for the last six years. Um, See, I did my not, first divorce in like two months flat. Mary Lee is like, I, I, I'm enjoying this. So I would like it to just be a thing forever. Just so you know, Gail is highly skilled and highly efficient. It takes me a little more time to catch up with things. So she's often the one trailblazing for us. Um, and yeah, uh, I have been inefficient. And there are a lot of people that like to imply that I don't want to be divorced and that's why this is happening. I can tell you. It's so fun being it, tethered to somebody I don't want to be tethered to forever. That that's not true. And and I think there's a lot of horrifying and really, really, uh, ooh, I'm going to use a millennial word, toxic. Um, uh, or maybe that's younger than us. I have no idea. Um, millennials or Gen X? That's the, that is the real question. I have no idea. It really depends <laughs> on the which article you read we're kind of in that borderline birthday range yeah we're uh, 81 81 born 80 but 80. We're, we're literally a month apart we're a month apart. <laughs> our birthdays are one month we're to the day right. apart one of us was before the new year and the other one was after it, so. that's right another parallel and mary so, leah shares shares a birthday with my two-year-old cat so of course that's mm -hmm. that's why that's why we're friends <laughs> so, yeah, so that, that's that been a horrifying experience and um, not very much fun. But what's, um, what's beautiful about that is it's afforded me a lot of headspace to, to get somewhere else with life and the desire to pull away from the, the non-entity that I had become and the, into trying to do some things for myself um, in, a, in a similar way to the way you're building your own business and doing freelance and now doing your own thing with poly, uh, feral polymess. Um, I also have been, I joined a uh, of which I'm the president and trying to do like exhibitions and stuff. I also um, have joined as co-producer of an electronic music festival, the Electroacoustic music festival at Brooklyn College. And I want to become a producer of cool things that happen in the world. I also personally um, make a lot of drawings and animations and I collaborate with my partner, Alfredo Marin, who's a sound artist. And we make stuff together a lot, all of which is like weird and disgusting and, and sexual and beautiful and whatever else you can think to dump all of the emotional stuff that you want to dump out onto a page, that's what we do to get. So it's Yeah. Good. And I think it's interesting that both me and Mary Leah, we're both definitely like science, math. We love to figure shit out people, but we also had that like burning need to have some sort of creative expression. And I yeah. know for me, like um, 
I always loved math because math was safe and you could do math and get the right answer and you could prove that that answer was right and no one could tell you otherwise because you freaking proved it but when it comes to creative endeavors there's two things first you're pouring your entire heart and soul out into something and then other people get to have opinions about it <laughs> <laughs> exactly which is like its own special like drama i don't know but uh i mean i think it helps to find like groups of people i know when i was doing a lot of my fiction writing early on i had found a group that like basically i could write whatever about whatever and just turn my internal editor off and just go with it and it didn't matter how dark or weird or disturbing it got this group of people was like okay we're looking at the writing and we're looking at how to make this better and like good so you're not disturbed by that scene i just wrote <laughs> And I'm like, oh God, my parents let me read this one day. Ooh. But you know, you can you can Google and find whatever I've written online. Have fun with that. There will be other things coming forward in the nonfiction department and then like tamer fiction, like sci-fi, which I was never gonna write, but um and yeah, stuff just a post-apocalyptic stuff. Yeah, of you know, All the, gentle, the gentle things. The gentle, like, you know. There's a little bit of bludgeoning, but I mean, whatever. Yeah, I think this is another thing that takes that takes us a very strong pivot away from like the mommy dumb experience is that we're both like when we get to do art, Don't read the book I wrote, child. Lay it all out there and stay gonna, away. Exactly, I have an entire room in my house where I'm just like, guys, you you just can't go in there. Just, I mean, it's, it's not like, until you're 18. <laughs> it's all right. Yes. Fine. <laughs> These are things that, that uh, you know, sometimes you need to express <laughs> if you've had a certain amount of life experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll traumatize them later when they're older. I mean, I tra feel like I traumatized my children all along the way because you yeah. have to have a certain amount of like adversity to overcome in order to be a complete human. Of course, of course, we did, so <laughs> I've been dead. <laughs> yes, yes. Like my my sixteen year old son will tell you how terrible I am at grocery shopping right now and how how like traumatizing that is for him that there's not ego waffles in the freezer. <gasps> Even though he has a truck, a license, and an allowance. Those ego waffles could easily I, to the house. <laughs> we live like two blocks from a store. I don't whatever. He's gonna have a job soon. He'll be responsible for more things. Yes than just taking out the garbage so oh see mine are mine are 11 and 12 so they're still they're oh, still yeah. Baby song. Yeah, yeah that's what you think <laughs> my really. 12 year old acts like she's like 30. i'm like what are you <laughs> <laughs> my very... baby doesn't want to be a baby yeah well yeah your baby's probably going to be in college soon so i think it'll be okay I mean, even given her age, she's she's got some advanced ideas there. That little that little bean, which is very exciting yeah. too. That's something we could. Well, I don't know how much she wants to be well, part. Of. Yeah, well, we can. I mean, so that's the thing. Talking about your children is like I would I would probably just ask them first, but uh, but we can say a little bit about them. You know, the thing about like I don't know why it is that like having children and becoming a mom is like this like you are now in this like intellectual pit of despair and you are nothing but service for others like yeah. see when i had kids i felt like it was a case study in human development what will it do how did it react to stimuli how can we modify its behavior and when you have more than one like the next one is not at all like the first one and so then it's like a new experiment and so <laughs> it becomes even more interesting yeah. They, they are interesting as these as these other entities in ways that have nothing to do with the cliche of, of what you're supposed to be doing with them as a mom. Like they're just they have they're they're going to be humans, <laughs> adults at some point, and they have the seeds of that in them. And yeah, they're all completely different. Well, even just like when they were very little, I remember uh, my oldest the way to get that kid to behave was to explain things in elaborate detail. Mm -hmm. Second child, mm -mm, mm -mm. redirect. 
we're good. Redirect was what you needed to do. He had no idea he was misbehaving. He just wandered into something and it was breaking. And you just need to push him over that way. And then he's happy and he has no memory of what just occurred. That's great. Yeah, a completely different approach. If you had tried Their that child way. argues with you until you give up and you lose your your sense of will, like your your sense of self. Oh, yeah, they're all very different. Yeah, they definitely are. Yeah, many people have told me my children are like chalk and cheese, which I think is kind of insulting. Chalk and cheese. Well, I mean, there's many good. We all <laughs> like chalk and use chalk and cheese in our lives. Cheese is <laughs> wonderful, good. versatile food. Cheese. Well, yeah. <laughs> Whichever one's the one that got cheese, definitely. Definitely. Well, chalk. Chalk has a lot. I mean, you can use it for writing on blackboards and stuff. But like, I mean, gymnasts use writing. it for yeah. Gymnasts use it for grip. You know, it's it's yeah, it's it's, it's great. It's um. You can draw on the sidewalks and make all sorts of art. Of course. So, Greet people as they come up your driveway. This mm -hmm. is very special. I'll tell the chalk child. <laughs> it's not so bad being chalk. It's okay. <laughs> Gail says so. Yes. Yes. There's always a way to spin something to make it better. Which brings me to, to the topic of reality. Okay. Ooh, that's cool. Let's dive in. <laughs> what makes reality is it an actual fundamental underlying thing or just our interpretations of it i mean we could go on and on about that i mean my 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 take is there is an underlying reality that mm -hmm. is objective but we interact with it through senses sensory input and then we have like reasons to have thoughts that are not in line with it motivated by survival instinct or need to be better than everyone else because we all have that right Right. And uh, and that's yeah. Why so then that distorts reality. So the real key is to be really good at distorting reality in your favor, <laughs> so that you can manipulate others. <laughs> I'm really bad at this because like my uh, mm -hmm. my sense of like my own thoughts is always like so intense that I can't like pause and be like nice to other people. <laughs> Oh no! Maybe we should talk about that. We should talk about how social skill. The, the the I mean, as you know, like I think the misanthrope in you is one of the greatest things that that, that about you. <laughs> yes, proud <laughs> misanthrope. No, I definitely. And Mary Leah has got me socks that say I fucking hate people on them, and and I hate people too. The one with the horses, yeah. So I just it's something I say a lot is like I hate people, and I think that's like my reaction to feeling alienated. And feeling frustrated and feeling like nobody around me is in line with my own thoughts, needs, wants, whatever. And mm -hmm. instead of like being patient, I just go straight to hating everyone. So, yeah. Which is, why, which is why Vision. we're going to have to watch American Splendor this week. <laughs> and, and it's weird because, you know, I think that one of the things that's funny and very opposite about us is that I've always been like the... I love everybody. Oh my God. I think everyone's wonderful. And boy, has that gotten me into trouble over the years. <laughs> Meanwhile, I hate everyone. And that also has gotten me into trouble over the years. Yeah. So I feel like oh. this is also something that will be interesting to, to work through is like, what is that? What what are people? Are they safe or horrifying? Are they stupid or like really just brilliant and wonderful and helpful? Well, see, I, I think about the so the intelligence thing, and this is something we'll have to talk about a lot because mm -hmm. but uh I you know I'm always like everybody's stupid, right? And that's mm -hmm. so annoying. But I have dogs and they're object <laughs> objectively dumber than people, right? Yes, but dumb. I still love them. <laughs> You don't hate so, that stupidity. What's the difference between dogs and stupid people? That's super interesting. That is a very interesting idea. <laughs> yeah, because it's not it's not actually like a lack of intelligence that's insulting. It's like a, a will. There's something else going on that's mm -hmm. deeply offensive to your nature. And that seems that, yeah, I think is super alienating to everybody in some ways because let's face it where we are in the united states in the world in general there's just it's very hard to 
align with a lot of the things that are going on because it's it, it's it's um it's weird out there definitely the when world is so big and interconnected and mm -hmm. you get this feeling like i feel like when the world was less connected i mean everybody wants to be like good at something known for something the person people go to for something but when like the whole world is connected you're then competing against like all eight billion or something you know and then you're like oh there's no hope for me <laughs> so i think that means spend less time online and connect with people near you but that requires social skills so and how that goes. Mm. <laughs> well that's the other thing that we're both socially awkward in such totally different ways like i i get so excited about interacting with people and then it just falls so badly on their face well, because i'm like trying to share all the things i'm interested in and they're just like mm -hmm. it's like what are you like, this happened yeah i i like see the thing is if i'm not really anti-social like i feel like i need social connection i need to be around people i need to have human interaction just to be a fully realized person that feels part of society. And right. so I do desire going to events, interacting with people, but I feel like, I don't know. I think, I think, cause I don't take the time to like be patient <laughs> initially. I just very quickly get disappointed and frustrated because part of it too is like, you always sort of expect people to think or at least be able like they're a human you're a human surely we can think and reason in similar ways so i see this thing and i think these things because of those things and then like you express like, that to someone and then they're like <laughs> they're like but i think this totally different thing and i base it on nothing but and and you're like but I i've researched this i've read five novels listened to 27 podcasts and wrote an essay and they're like well, like, I thought about it for a couple minutes and you're like, okay, this isn't going to work. That doesn't change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah, that is part of the problem is, and I think that's part of the reason I want to have this podcast and to start doing things is because I start learning about something or thinking about something or investigating something and I'll just do it on my own really deeply and elaborately and independently and then i go to someone to have a conversation and it's like it doesn't work because they have it obsessed like i have so well, this is like a, a place to start expressing that and then maybe people will find us and talk to us exactly because statistically we know they're out there we did yeah, enough statistically okay even even if it's so um you know i was identified as gifted as a child right and that's usually the depending upon your school the cutoff for that may be 95th percentile 97th percentile 98th percentile and that sounds all really high but when you figure out how many people are in the world i mean even 99th percentile is one in a hundred okay yeah. well there's eight billion people in the world take away two of the zeros you still have a heck of a lot of people in that top percentile right all feeling super alienated and locally all feeling super and super alienated because locally no one around them right but yeah, 99 people around them are like Ugh, what are you doing but then the other question is is that other 90 99 percent of people are they really do, do we throw them away like no i don't throw my dogs away this <laughs> just sounds terrible <laughs> all the other people are dogs we're, no we're, no we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, work we're gonna off. offend everyone. we're working on ourselves okay guys like bear with us as we work on ourselves <laughs> but no it's it's it's, <laughs> it's difficult and the thing is is it's true being gifted can be very freaking alienating and it's and it's like this weird taboo because like oh well you're smart so that's like a superiority thing so you should just be happy that you're superior in some way like i don't know if we could call it superior if it's only leading to dysfunction in life um yeah that's a good point there's a lot of if, if it's not actually can if it's not contributing to even your own personal happiness it seems like there's something off about this designation as being like wonderful and special mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and and there are different needs and both of us have at least one child in this category and when you yeah. watch them grow like 
you yeah. see it and you're like, oh God, the things they encounter in school, the things they have to deal with. And you're just like, you're like pains please. you. Yeah. And and I, yeah, and, and I had that connection too. I was a gifted kid, but I was also twice exceptional. <laughs> so yeah, I've I've so I also have this really weird relationship with intelligence, knowing for a fact that there are certain tasks that I am first percentile and that like everyone will always do better than mm -hmm. I mean and it's so crazy because I was like but uh, weirdly my other dysfunctions and my other you know I, I'm I had the enough you know other forms of intelligence to like apply it to those things and then like oh I'm LD in math I'm gonna go to a PhD in applied math and see how that goes <laughs> you know I mean there's a the interplay between these things and the understanding of like you know neural diversity and all of this stuff you know it really it really kind of both humbles you and uh you really want to know what what kind of room is there in the world for yourself uh when you think differently than other people yeah i mean there's this whole like we are social animals and it feels good to be around people who can mirror you who can contribute to your thoughts and ideas and when you don't have that it can be so alienating um i recently was uh i had briefly joined a book group right uh and to be social and they just pick terrible books i don't know why but i read the book and having been someone who's obsessively studied writing, I felt like I could see the writing process, the reason choices were made, what the editor probably said after the first round, all of these things. And I could just, you know, maybe I was wrong, but mm -hmm. as, having been around writers, having looked at novel writing, having written novels, having edited other people's novels, it's just like, okay yeah i see exactly what this is what the writer was thinking how the process went blah 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 i'm sitting in this group of people and it's like we start discussing it and the people are just saying things that are so inane and surface and i started feeling like i needed to run away <laughs> like nobody sees what i see they're all seeing something entirely different that like I get what they're seeing because it's the little surface layer, but like nobody sees any of the other pieces of this. And if I say anything, I'm going to make everyone mad. And I hated the book and I'll make everyone mad. And then it's like, that's not a good way to make friends. Like the thing is, is I also have this very natural tendency to like find flaws in things. And that's like my, mm -hmm. my natural instinct. And so like, if it comes to discussing a book, I'm like, Let's talk about everything the writer should have done differently to make this better. <laughs> and that can be, people tend to hate that. Mm -hmm. But that's actually like, if you're a writer, that's how you get better is picking yeah. apart everything. And I've had writing groups I've been in where my ability to like really sharply pick apart and point out all the problems mm -hmm. was greatly appreciated. And then right. I've had other groups where people were deeply offended by that. So, I don't know. I think I just, I rub people the wrong way a lot and it's because of my own insecurities and weirdnesses. And I just, I don't know, it's frustrating. I have a hard time connecting with people. And I mean, one of, one of the things that might be kind of fun to do is like totally delve into the podcast buzzword of attachment and attachment <laughs> style and be like, my hmm. parents might listen to this at some point if they decide. Oh no! To <laughs> Then, no, they don't need to know. Maybe they just will never know this exists. Be like, let me talk about everything my parents did wrong. I'm sure, they'll ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I guess what I'm saying is like it's it's kind of. I was just realizing when you were saying it that picking apart and finding flaws, it's a survival skill. It's it's a way of being vigilant. Right. Yeah, you oh. make sure you're not going to make any errors, so no one has anything to criti criticize about you. Right. Like, Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's a way of protecting yourself against criticism because probably someone. And that's why, <laughs> that's why Bath always felt safe. Can't they, tell me I'm wrong. It's right. I've proved it's right. 
the end. Interesting. But like writing is like people don't like it because they have a subjective opinions. Okay. I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. That is wrong and dangerous. And you're all going to fail. <laughs> yes, yes. It's very sad. You're just yeah. trying to warn them about their eminent failure as writers. Yeah, exactly. I'm helping you by telling you how bad you are. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, and see, I see I see things as so wonderful and great because I just want to be liked and 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 you all like me, right? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I want to be liked too, but I yeah. go about it by offending. <laughs> <laughs> oh no and i and yeah. i yeah. does that work i don't I, I don't know it's super interesting though i think i think this is really fun i think that's i think that we're gonna learn a lot just talking to each other and looking at things and digging into ideas and hearing ourselves speak because we'll we'll certainly oh, okay. we're certainly going to be just as critical of ourselves as we are as of everyone else when we listen to this later uh, so I hate guys, if the you sound found, of my own voice. If you guys were offended by anything we said, guess what? We're going to be offended too. True. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like, well, that's another thing people? is we're using, what are we? We're using Google Meets to record this podcast, which is oh. like not going to be ideal because, but it was cheap. And the thing is, is if you don't just start doing something because it's not, you're not perfectly ready, then you never get anywhere. So no, this we're is just starting. Point. We're just starting and we're going because we need to. So that's, yeah. that's how that I works. Think it's good to do it for ourselves too, because um, leaving all of these ideas just bottled up was killing both of us. <laughs> I was, see, I can never quite tell when I'm going legit, not sane, or if I'm just so. There's this, uh, what was the guy's name? Dabrowski, uh, who did a lot of research into like the psychology of gifted people and other stuff. And he mm -hmm. has these overexcitabilities. Dabrowski's mm -hmm. overexcitabilities, like your psychomotor overexcitabilities. And mm -hmm. some of them are things like, oh yeah, things I do, like really obsess about ideas and get really like stuck into an uh, opinion or feel emotions really, really intensely. But all of these things are also indications of various, like, uh, personality disorders, psychological problems. And it's like this fine line. And, like, I recently went through sort of a I mean, part of why we're doing this now is because I couldn't let the ideas pile up in my mind anymore. They were going to explode. And I was getting, I can't tell if I was just experiencing overexcitabilities mm -hmm. or going legitimately <laughs> Well, we'll all find out next week. Uh, <laughs> maybe it could be either, depending upon because you know it's a rather subjective field, right? So, I mean, I guess it all comes down to: Are you functioning in life? And the answer at that time was: I mean, a lot of crying and like binge eating bad food and offending people going on, but mm. I was still kind of functioning. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I functioned that way before. <laughs> so yeah. But I think this is a fun, a fun journey to embark on. I hope everybody will also get on the boat with us. Yeah. I know our, our goal for this podcast in general is, you know, we both have so many thoughts and ideas about I mean everything, math, physics, science, psychology, work, mm -hmm. life, parenting, self art writing creative things and we, we can discuss these we have the best phone calls mary lee and i do and like we're always like oh people if they could hear this you know oh. but, but uh so we're gonna share that i feel better future, off. exactly future episodes we'll try to like pick a couple of specific topics and focus on those instead of like right now we're just scatter shotting like blah 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 Right. And uh, we will maybe have people on to interview that are cool and interesting and doing neat things. Right. And we hope it's entertaining. We hope other feral polymaths out in the world um, 
find us find us valuable because i know like some of my favorite podcasts to listen to are ones where people just talk about their thoughts and ideas and it sounds <laughs> and even though i'm not actively participating i feel like i'm in a group of people who get yeah how i think in some way right and that's just it's reassuring so if you feel alone with your thoughts collapsing your brain in because they're just piling up and nobody cares about them and you don't have anywhere to put them like definitely we care. listen to us we care we well care. actually mary leah cares i, I might care she but i might also I, think, I you're think you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you we value you listening to us that's correct <laughs> that's correct because maybe yeah we will base our self-worth on our follower count and if it's low, we're gonna get really depressed about that and think that we're terrible people that don't deserve to like exist. But if it's high, we're gonna be like, oh, we have worth, we have worth. Yeah, that's right. We still might cry. Yeah, we'll try to do the crying off camera though. I'm just gonna save that for like when I'm alone under my weighted blanket. <laughs> those will be, those will be private phone calls. <laughs> Afterwards, we'll just just decompress with each other. Oh, oh but then then we'll all. Well, I I still need to order my weighted blanket. Yeah, man. Yeah, I gotta show you this, this great life hack I have. Uh -huh. You can see this water glass. Oh, what is so, that? It's a water glass, and it have a rubber band around it. Do you know why I have a rubber band around my water glass? To remind because, you to drink water. No, because we have like twenty of these exactly the same oh people so in our house will drink water and leave it on the counter and then nobody knows whose glass is whose and so then it's you get another glass and then another glass but if you oh put a God. rubber band around it's, your glass it's then you know it's identify it. and life tell everyone how i wasn't the one who did anything wrong you did i have been using the same glass all day i haven't been going through 10 glasses because I have a rubber band on mine. Oh, so there. <laughs> yes. I can't really claim credit for this. This was actually my youngest child's idea from a couple years ago. Oh, wow. But, oh, I, I hope you have a patent on that, right? Yeah, we can sell little packets of rubber bands. We should totally do that. Green identifiers. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's yeah. do that we, we, while you're making a website. <laughs> It's I not like I don't have other things. I mean, I've got uh, I've got more work than I really need. <laughs> and then I've got well, two, only two kids living at home now. So, you know, the parenting's getting pretty light, except for like, get out of bed, take out the garbage, do the dish. Like, there's a lot of that. And uh, uh, the 12 year old needs me to drive her around everywhere. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so now I'm also building a website, a podcast. I'm working on putting some books together on the side. And then I have dogs. I have this puppy. She's five and a half months old. And I swear to God, <laughs> she's great. But she, like, while I'm working, she likes to come in and bark at my face if I'm not throwing a ball for her, which makes it really hard to focus and do things. Uh-oh, I think Mary Leah froze again. Someone wants to join the call, Mary Leah. <laughs> okay, um, so Mary Leah will come back. Look, now there's again. two of you. I have like the frozen picture of you and yeah. then the, the animated version. That's great. There's like two of you, you're multiplying. I'm, 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 that's how, but I just, I split universes or something. Oh, uh -oh. We, should, we should talk some. Oh, more. yeah, we can really... totally talk about various theories about oh, quantum ones. mechanics and origins of the universe and whether other universes exist that would be very fun <sighs> there's, there's a, a lot to go to go yeah. on off of there he's out there <laughs> we can oh, tell fun. you the story of when we uh met roger penrose you know that was super fun now the now you've recombined again so that's good i'm one person now your wave function has collapsed that's right <laughs> I am no longer Schrodinger's cat. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, uh, but yes, expect full on detailed dork fests from this podcast. And uh, 
weird stories from our lives. Like I know Mary Leah has a story about taking her cat to the bank yesterday. Oh yeah, I will totally you share that. Um, this is this is what our lives are like. Yeah, you guys don't know what happens to these middle aged moms, man. It is chaos. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, do you want me to tell them now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh. Tell a story. Who who brings their cat to a bank? I mean, nobody except for you. Well, well I had a meeting at the bank at 8.30 because that was the only time I could make time because it was right after dropping off the kids to school because I have to do 50 bajillion other things after that. So I was like, all right, right then. I'm going to go to the bank. I'm going to take care of this shit. It's going to be great. And of course, like, I'm getting up at like 6 in the morning trying to get all the kid things together because the school is half an hour away. And general everything happening and i'm driving i'm feeling very confident everyone got in the car in time everything's going super smoothly i'm not wearing a bra but who the fuck cares i'm not going anywhere except the bank um which i totally forgot about but as i'm driving i remember i'm going to the bank in my bra estate and i'm like oh shit i'm going to the bank and then i hear a gentle and I realized that the kids brought the cat in the car with us to say hi to all their friends at school. <laughs> so as I pull in, I, I realized then that I pull into the bank and it happens to be the one spring day that's also like 84 degrees here for no reason. So I cannot possibly leave the cat in the car. And I then proceed to walk into the bank and, and ask them what their pet policy is. <laughs> and. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that most of the people at the bank, though they have an open pet policy and definitely like dogs inside, were quite worried about the woman, braless and hair awry, coming in with her cat to do some goddamn business and sell some shares, goddammit. it. <laughs> And, and like, it, what did, did you carry the cat in something? Was the cat on you? Was there a leash involved? Yeah, this was the thing. I, I actually, so this is what's crazy. I tucked the cat into my sweater and ran into the Walgreens in order to purchase a leash for the cat so that I could take it into the bank. So I actually entered another building first and they didn't notice that I had a cat, which was great. <laughs> That's a very good cat. I feel like my cats would not. They'd be like, ah, 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 ah. this is a super mellow cat. Like all, both of my cats have been extremely mellow. I think it's because I just like baby them constantly. I I don't know. They're like super super mellow cats. But this cat is also very mellow, and um, so I was able to sneak him in, get his thing, and then yeah, he just cl clung to my to my shoulder, and oh, it's like a brooch. <laughs> exactly. He just hung my shoulder, and and as I walked in, they were like, "Well, he's not going to attack anybody, right?" And I was just like, "No, I have him trained." And I was like, "Actually, he's just terrified, and he's not going to leave me because he's really scared." <laughs> but I was like, "Yeah, he's a hundred percent trained. It's not going to be a problem at all. Just bring me those documents so I can sign." <laughs> raising through yeah this is, mm -hmm. this is what happens when you're a middle-aged mom you just gotta there's a cat right and you gotta you. take it to the bank with you just yeah. how it is sometimes jesus yeah. christ yeah i don't know if that was a good move or a bad move but we got through it and actually the the banking guy will never forget me now exactly see you made an impression you're memorable the cat behaved itself so they didn't <laughs> think you were lying when you said you trained it and <laughs> and everything everything worked out in the end so oh, there's God. a lot we have many stories of things that don't work out in the end so no <laughs> yeah, i feel like a champion now but the amount of shame that i felt going <laughs> there with the cat hanging on me was was profound they like, <laughs> figure you must be some crazy person and this is my emotional support cat it is always comes with me no, they they totally totally the other banker that saw me come in with the emotional with my cat. Later, the guy went out there because I I needed to, advice on a, on an estate planning guy, and and he the so the one that was working with me went out to his his buddy and asked him about estate planning, and then he came back and he was like, "Well, um, I don't think uh, he he didn't want to say because he thought that maybe." Um, Basically, the upshot was that he thought I was too poor to actually need an estate planning person. <laughs> because you carry your cat around? That 
<laughs> I'm like the shovel to have a cat with me. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. Like, uh, no, yes. No, I actually do have like business ideas. It may be <laughs> unwashed and haggard, but it's I, just I, because I, I don't care. <laughs> not because I'm poor. Not because I am a pubo. <laughs> no, I mean, it's so, yeah, it's so silly. But it's also so arrogant of people to like judge in that way. It's like, also, like, don't, even if I was poor, what if I just needed an estate planner? For Christ's sake. Like, I don't have, like, things that I need to accomplish here. So there. Sorry. That was exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Man. Oh, Man. Yeah. So what is, yeah, I mean, maybe we'll wrap this episode up since this is our inaugural episode. But, you know, I'm thinking about all these other things we could talk about, about, like, having to be presentable in public and what that means. In terms yeah. of bras, makeup, bathing. I haven't worn makeup in a long time. Hair. Yeah. You know, that's giving acne. Yeah. Like, what does it take to be, like, a respected middle-aged mom around the other moms? I'm, oh. I'm sure some of them are also dying inside, too, because they have intellectual lives in their brains that never get out of their head because they're busy like where's your shoes uh who hasn't like yeah. who needs a towel and what time is gymnastics practice and why are we doing another fundraiser you know all that stuff that just goes. yeah so, yeah man the straight shot to 60 and it's scary yeah yeah i'm like we're both over like the halfway point in the, our parenting journey so yeah. at some point these kids will be gone. And then what are we going to do? I guess we will have more time to obsess about weird shit. And that's going to be a whole thing. So, uh, Well, then you guys will benefit from all of that, of course. Yes. 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 Well, I think that is it for our first episode. So we are going to sign off and say, listen again. And uh, we, there will be a, there will be a website. I already have the domain. It's, feralpolymaths.com. It is not live yet, but maybe it'll be by the time this recording is live. We don't know. It depends upon whether my son can find his shoes and I spend time looking for them or whether the dog barks in my face. But I will try to find time to put everything together. So farewell, grand audience. I'm ending the recording. Bye.